there are chickens out in my yard right now. Yeah, where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh okay, so here we are. We're recording and going over the screen. Yeah, not that I was necessarily um doing this, but my wife has all the boys. We have seventeen chickens and oh. building like a huge coop. Right. And she's she's doing the, the lion's share of it. Um let me hop over here. Have you have you done chickens okay. before? Yep. Yeah, we had a uh, thirty something years ago. Wow. That's a lot and, of eggs. Yeah. And so yeah, you wake up every day. I mean we had too many eggs. We couldn't keep up with them all. I know. So, um we love it. It's just so fun with the kids. <laughs> so uh Mark, this drawing yeah. is fantastic. Like you, you you really I mean everything that we spoke about before yep. you addressed in terms of like like the drop downs and proportions. You know, I would like to actually see the original side by side. Um, I have it. I have it here. Oh, okay. You have it. Let me let me see if I could. It's going to be buried somewhere. If you see it, uh, let me know. There's your your version, but from a week before. Get there it close. Is. Cool. Oh, cool. That's nice. Um. So actually, let me copy. And by the way, I got myself an Alvin pencil. You're absolutely correct. Wow, aren't they great? Yeah, they're just so smooth. I, you know, uh, maybe it's some that point gets dull on the standard um, pencil, but this thing is nice. It, it, I'm telling you, it's like it's a world of difference because it's it's so much to me like the violin, like that teacher sure. I told you about, and she was just like, you know, Kevin, you're practicing, you're doing well, but you can only push this instrument so far. Yeah. Like you, you can't, this violin will not do for you what you are asking of it. Um, and so that was, you know, the time to get like another instrument and there we are. Cool. Um, and an Alvin pencil is just top of the line, not yeah. expensive. Nope. And you can attack like certain, uh, contour passages that you just couldn't do otherwise. Yeah. Um, okay. So jumping over, um, the, the shapes, like like I was talking about before, the way you dropped all of the shapes, it's just really well done. Um, and I think, I think that um, you're different. Like one drawing alone, and I swear you're like you're like a different artist. So let me. <laughs> you know. Okay, so we have cool. Oh, I enjoy the YouTube. Thank you for the YouTube, by the way. Enjoy that as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It's been really yeah. cool though. I, I've been doing that with a number of the students and um, they've just been able to like replay it and they're not clogging up their computer with a 140 right. megabyte file. Um, you know, so it's like, I love this new discovery. I'm just learning how to do things better and better. Um, yeah. So like the front of the head and that empty space in between, you're actually starting to see the negative space. That's yeah. negative space you're starting to see that um, so well. Um, whereas your other drawing, no. um, we, we have that like, you know, that steady conversation about the dangers of seeing piecemeal where you see an arm, the lower arm, and then you see the upper arm. But what you really want to see is the upper arm or the entire arm so in relation yes. to the entire torso. But you want to see the entire arm in relation to the entire figure and the negative space and that's what you're doing um you did it <laughs> like it's just yeah. like yeah. well it's really really the line, well done. The, what was the big help was dropping those lines that yep. you had told oh um, it made it you know i kept angles another angle and another angle and i caught yep. it yep and that's again we have like the three approaches to drawing and painting where we're, we're plotting things out and we we're talking about the mancini grid right um I actually the way I looked him up, he is an amazing. Whoa, is he an amazing artist? He's an amazing artist. He's but like never, but buried in history. Who knows him? Yes, yeah, he really is. And it's yeah. it's interesting that you know, like like Sargent said that he was the greatest painter of of their day and age. Um, I I just myself personally, I'm struck by all of these like phenomenal. Like I'm just learning about Brangwen right now, um, and how Brangwen just a tremendous painter but lost in history and in world war ii he turned his uh abilities towards uh posters fighting the axis 
Cool. <laughs> really, really cool work. But uh, all right, Mark, are you call it, call his name? Um, I'll, I'll write it down right here. All right, thanks. Are, are you and I connected on Facebook? I don't think I am on Facebook, and I certainly have seen you on Facebook. But I get, yeah, I think we are. Oh, there he is. Okay, I'll find him. And while I'm on the subject, you mentioned that this Rembrandt was one of your three favorites. Who are the other two? Who are the other two? Um, wait, I'm sorry. Rembrandt as an artist or Rembrandt's drawing specifically? Rembrandt, I mean, you, yes, right, the, you said you have three favorite drawings, one of which is this one, and there's two others which you never mentioned to me. Um, I probably, I'm funny this way, like I get made fun of for saying things are my favorite because I have like three favorite drawings and they rotate yeah. constantly. But the, okay. one, the one that like stays steady is the Paganini. Um, the Paganini is one of yeah. My, well, I'm sorry, it was the Paganini? It wasn't the Rembrandt. You're right. Yeah. Um, and then if I have other favorite drawings, it might be. Um, I really, really love Michelangelo's drawing of the Libyan Civil. Um, and that's the she's from behind where you see her. I mean, it's kind of like an androgynous. It's an it's somewhat angelic, so it's neither male nor female. Right. And um she's clutching something. Do you know that drawing? No, I do not. Okay, cool. So let's, we could do that for next week. So let's pull that up now. Um, you'll recognize it when you see it. There she is, Libyan Sybil. Um, so that's wow. the fresco. Right. But I like, the, I like the drawing even better than the painting. And let's hope this is the Metropolitan. Yeah, Metropolitan yeah. has the best link to this file. Yeah, actually, they... a long, long time ago, I did this. I did this one, but it wouldn't yeah, hurt I to thought, do it. I thought, I thought you would have. Um, yeah. I kind of feel like we spoke about it because I remember talking about the, the upper arm. Um, Correct. Correct. So, like, that's definitely, definitely one of my favorite drawings of all time. Just absolutely love it. It is I thought just... it was a man. I didn't realize it was a female. I, it's, a, it's a female. Yeah, like um, there's a passage like um, in the New Testament, um, the four Gospels, in which someone's trying to catch uh, the Messiah. They're trying to catch Jesus saying like in, in like a riddle. So they say a woman is married to a man and he dies. Uh, the man dies and she remarries and she remarries and he dies, remarries, remarries, remarries. And they said when he gets to heaven, when she gets to heaven, who's her husband? <laughs> um, so it was like a riddle. And he said, in heaven, we're like the angels. We are neither married nor given in marriage, uh, for there is neither male nor female. Ah, and okay. so Michelangelo really seized on that for his work. It's kind of interesting because art historians, um, they go into like, I've never heard an art historian talk about that in my whole entire life, where the figures that he, he does they're by design they're androgynous right well that's because again also michelangelo again about his orientation <laughs> yeah i mean like that too but like but i but i also think he was painting um the higher spiritual reality do you know what i'm yeah, saying I, I, that's fair that's fair by the way would so this he, be good conti would this be a nice looks like a good conti study yeah conti yeah yeah um, maybe I'll, I'll put on the roma paper it looks like it could go really nice on the roma paper it could, yeah. I, I don't know how Conti's received by Roma. You are actually my go-to for <laughs> Well, for okay. Conti. Um, All right, you'll, you'll let me know next week when I show it to you. Yeah, so what I'll do is I will, um, I'm just going to send you over that file right Thank now. Um, and there we go. And there's our... <laughs> <laughs> I love that painting by Corbet. That is such oh, yeah. a great painting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so we can actually carry on here. Oh, the one thing I wanted to say is um, you can get out once you're done, you know, working with your Alvin pencil. Um, right. Get out the most velvety, dark pencil that you have. Okay. And obviously, this is ink and you're working in graphite. So right. you can't really push the dark so that dark. But um, you kind of, I call this like dynamic range where you can go in. And you can really, like, let's say, um, let's pretend that we're smashing a piano with our fist. Like, it's probably not a good idea to do it. 
But if you smash a piano with your fist, you hear the dynamic range that's possible from the instrument right. and how dark your darks can go. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And so as I look at this, um, that's the one thing that I'm thinking um, is that you could get your 6B pencil out, or whatever your darkest pencil is, doesn't really matter. Yep. Um, and you could really try to push the dynamic range as dark as you can in certain areas. And it's not to, obviously not to be done everywhere, but like watch how that pops the chest forward. Yeah. Oh, it does. So you could even do this on this drawing because in no way, shape or form is this a, a do over. Um, it's almost as if you pour the foundation, you built the house, you have the structure, and now you're going in and you're putting cedar shingles on the house. Okay. Like, well, as I said um, last week, enhance, have it enhancements. Yep, exactly, exactly. And just going in like right here, um, I, I'm going accidentally too dark because this computer program is okay. still learning. <laughs> but um, then you see the path of light flowing over the form a, a little bit more. Wow, sure. And it becomes like, I'm going just a hair darker over here. A um, little bit darker right here beneath his arm. And as the you back work... Of head, the back of his head needs a little... Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's nice. Isn't that cool? So this is your That's drawing, cool. heightened. Um, <laughs> even like a little bit in between the hands right yep. here. Inner... And inner Below his gastrocnemius, yep, right there. And look at how that pops off. And really, haven't I haven't done one shape correction, one anything. It's only the flow of light. Cool. Heightened Thank you. by shadow. And again, it's like, well, I was playing a, a, a violin piece by uh, Dvorak, and um, it starts out, and it, it has like this real punch in the beginning. And I was playing it and I was playing it like really mild, um, like kind of like mezzo forte, like right in the middle, where it was like, okay. um, da -da, da -da, like whatever, which way it went. I think I actually, I just did Shostakovich on accident, but <laughs> um, I really wasn't hitting it. And then my violin teacher grabs my violin and she, she when she grabbed it, she, with a bow struck the violin like violently and pulled the most powerful deep sonorous resonant note out of the violin and she goes i'm not saying to play it that hard but i need for you to know how loud your instrument can get because <laughs> you you don't know how loud your instrument can get you don't know your dynamic range of your own instrument right i'll never forget it for as long as i live because i picked up the violin afterwards and then I played it with force and the piece came alive. It was a totally new piece. Wow. Cool, very cool. And I was really, really struck by that where I was like, from this point forward, um, I want to bring that into, you know, obviously it was my music, but when I started painting, um, I like putting down velvety blacks. If I see a velvety black, like, and so again, I'm back over here. If I see a velvety black, um, like right here, right here he has certain key moments um i go for it and then the light like rembrandt is the painter of light right and right. he's not really the painter of form to, to tell you the truth he's a little clumsy if you look at that hand right there yeah rembrandt's um form isn't really all that smart and clever like that's not that well drawn but it works because look at that beautiful light landing on him um, this, this is what a mass painter is. This is what Rembrandt is. Yes, yes. As opposed yep. to our painting. Right. Cool. Yep. Great, great little so, lesson. Uh, cool. So, yeah, that, that's going to be fun for you to hop back into. Yeah. Um, it looks funny that we have the word Frank Brangwin on there because it looks like we're attributing that to Frank Brangwin instead of Rembrandt. <laughs> so what, what number th what's number three while I'm at? You know, I'm, I can knock this out by tomorrow. So, uh, yes. What's yep. number three? My number th th number three favorite. Hmm. I love I love Kalowitz. Kathia. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce Kathia Kalowitz. Um, let's take a look at her work. And there she is. Um, really, 
really, um, she was, I mean, she had some upsetting work. She lived through, uh, you know, both world wars. Wow. And just her story is just, it's just upsetting. Um, and she, I, I, uh, you know what? I'm going to let her work speak for itself. Kathy Kalowitz. And she has some drawings that are just like so powerful, but they're like upsetting. I don't even know how to put it into words. Yeah. Um, Looks like a Holocaust survivor to me. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. she has like these, like these pieces that are so tender. Oh yeah. Look but at that. Whole, that. Oh my. It's just, I mean, there's no severity in terms of, but it's also frightening. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I got to be honest. I can't really look at her work too much. Like, I can't. Well, no, there's, there's a Holocaust down down on the upper right there. Yeah, that's and, that's a that's a famous photograph. I mean, whether it's photographs similar to that. Yep. Yeah. And she um, she was painting the horrors of World War One, the horrors of you know what transpired in between, and. I can't look at too much of her work. Like I can go four or five images and then I just have to cut away. Yeah. I mean, that is really, that drawing right there is really upsetting. You know what I mean? Like the eyes are hollow. Um, oh yeah. So like she, she's a contender for the third, but maybe which drawing? I don't know, <laughs> maybe like the drawing of the child, but here's the weird thing about it. I would never take that drawing of that child and hang it in my home no so how is it my one of my favorite drawings i don't know i don't i don't even know the answer to that like so um okay so jumping back um so the i think i think the drawing as i have it is spun accidentally a little bit so i'm gonna tilt yeah. it this way um if sergeant did have the orientation of the axis that way. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll jump back to this drawing and see if I can change the orientation of that. Yeah, yeah. that feels pretty good. All right, cool. Um, ironically, one of the first things I would jump into is the hair. And sometimes uh, things such as the hair um, can help you. Um, it, can, it can be almost like visual, visual um, framing around the subject itself. So obviously we're not talking about the face f like specifically, but we are in that his hair has very definite um, angular shapes. Yes. It helps yeah. you frame out like the skull somewhat. And so ironically, that's where my eye goes first, where I would go in and like map that out. You know what I mean? And okay. then in mapping out the hair, like this coming through, I can kind of feel the underlying. Oh yeah! Wow. wow, that that move that move alone made all the difference. Oh my! Yeah, it's it's like funny, like and and not every artist would do this. Like another artist could hear me doing this right now and be like, "No, you got to go immediately for the jawline or this that." I don't know why, but I have like certain ways of working. This is just what m my eye sees, right. and then I jump over, and you know, kind of draw in those transitions. Um, let's get a little bit more light and he kind of carves out, that's a little bit too yeah. light. Um, he kind of carves out the light falling on the hair there and bear with me if I'm going too light here. I, uh, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. can't really select. So that helps me somehow see his face and even this tuft of light right here, this helps me see his face just like that. Amazing, Kevin. Amazing. So... I, I'm I'm amazed by how when I first started drawing, um, everyone would tell me the nose is the anchor of the face. The nose is the anchor of the face. They're right. They're totally right. But sometimes I needed the mass of the skull or the head in in order to see the anchor of the face. Like and so, <laughs> like I'm playing with words here, but like I needed to put the biggest, broadest mass in, and then address like internal information like that. You know what I mean? Yep. So um, you got this really well right here. Yeah. I mean, that, that turns very well. And I think the, where I'm, I'm going to go first is the jaw um, and the mouth feel a little bit um, far this way, where they're almost like 
a slightly slightly pulled. Yeah, yeah. I, God darn it! I yeah, I couldn't I couldn't put. Them, I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't know how to fix it. Yeah, and, and well, that's where like just like working together, the drawing is really nice. Like seriously, like that you are pulling off this compelling likeness, um, and you're just doing it so well. I mean, it's really it's really impressive. Um, so, I mean. I would just feel if I were you, um, let's, I'm, gonna, I'm editing the drawing guide sure. so we can, so we can drop, um, grid size. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Um, the fact that you got such a likeness, um, so quickly, um, with such, uh, I, I want to say succinctly, sorry. Um, is really oh, I see good. The problem, the, oh, goodness, the grid tells me immediately what I need to do. And ideally, I'd have the grid lined up for uh, both faces exactly the same. Um, I, I don't, I'm not a, an advocate of really grid drawing in the sense of like putting everything on a grid and copying it that way. I'm really not an advocate of that because it, like I'll check some lines that way, but um, I'm really showing it to you more for an illustration. But if you start getting to the place where you need a grid to map anything out, you, then you you cease to think of something as like let's just call this a cylinder. It's not really a cylinder, but let's call it a cylinder right. with light hitting it. And how does light like prominently strike? That like you you stop thinking in volumetric terms and you become a two dimensional macaw parrot that just squawks similar sounds without really understanding what it's saying. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yes, of course. Oh, um, so but I will check lines. So. I'm running a line down from his iris, the corner right there. I'm running a line down right here. It feels pretty good. Um, then I'm going to run a line down from the tear duct and it hits the nose right here. That feels pretty good. But then the eye right here uh, feels a little bit far over. Yeah. yeah. And I see that eye is coming in a little bit more. And yeah. so, I, again, this is just done by running lines. And now, as I've done that, look at how his gaze comes Thanks towards it comes towards us um and i'm going to just carve this out just like that so now he's looking at us a little bit more yeah. Yeah. and anytime you're thinking about and, and this is redundant and but anytime you're thinking about finding the view the viewer's gaze um what you want to do is you want to examine the placement of the cornea, the white of the eye and the finding the white of the eye will really help, help you land, you know, the, the, the focus, if that makes sense. It does make sense. So there we go. So, okay. So I'm not saying that that I've learned that, but now let's double back to the jaw. So the, it's just a small correction right here. But when I draw, I, I view these, these the first uh, attempt at finding a jawline, I just view it as almost like being like, do you ever in math like have the first stab at equation and you just kind of throw some data out there, if you know what I mean by that? Sure. Like you, sure. can't, you can't really, you don't know how long the length of, you know, that power, um, parallelogram you don't know the length of it so you just serve some data at it and then you're like oh and you get a bit of a feeler for where it needs to be yeah so yeah that's that's very much how I, I draw like something like a jawline now this jawline I'm measuring across from the lips that's where it has its first turn um, and then I'm looking at the negative space in between the corner of the lip and the jaw and so I'm just gonna kind of turn it right here turn it right there and if you look is. at my paintings, um, if you, if you x-ray my paintings, you will see the jawline move so many times it would blow, it blows your mind. I mean, seriously, just be amazed to see how many times I I'll shift it. I'll shift it like six and seven times in the course of one painting. Um, and I, I just, I throw data out and I just examine it. Um, so now that the, that gives a little bit more of, um, I don't even know how to say it, but it brings his 
the attention to like like his head has this like spark uh what's the word like vivacious kind of like mm -hmm. alert yes yeah. stance Definitely. like it's not languid um it's very alert so now his neck on the other side feels like it's too his neck feels too skinny and i run a line across and the neck kind of hits right there you see that and so uh, yeah. i run a line across Ooh, yep. and the neck kind of hits right there so there ish is my guess and now look at how he became young and powerful and and, and he's kind of this lithe englishman with a severity to him like in his in his like pursed lips but he's he's athletic at the same time no and so it his head has that like nice turn now and i'm saying something that i absolutely am just like throwing at it but it's not necessarily true but i almost feel like it has its angles um are somewhat influenced by greek statuary where they have the head and the neck kind of like and i'm exaggerating this greatly yeah. the 30 degree short yeah and it, it kind of like gives you this i don't know like it, it there's a power to these well, lines is a confidence there seems to be a confidence in the his gay confidence. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And how is John Barrymore? I mean, this is, this is one of the <laughs> great yeah. actors in 1923. I mean, this is this, he was it. Yep. And that that swagger, that confidence. Like now, your drawing has that. And when we draw, there's something in us. Ever since we're we're born, we all make we all do the lollipop head. Right. Of course. Whatever variant <laughs> it is, but we're drawn to perfect symmetry and head just like this but look at the difference um i really haven't done much i'll even put a, a nose and an indication of a mouth like in right here um look at the difference in confidence between this and this like this one is has so much more attitude it has so much more power you know what i mean sure. this one feels like go get a job like, <laughs> I don't know, like someone who's just like waiting for life. Um, and so that's why I'm always paying attention to the angle of the neck. And it says so much about the, uh, the, the sitter. Um, so with those changes, then the, th the next thing I'd say is probably what um, you could get a sharp, uh, I would get a sharp pencil out. And um, if, if you're okay with a uh, mixing media, because I don't think you can get those hatch lines with uh, Conti. I, no, you can't. Well, yeah, this this was um, nitro. This is on charcoal. This is nitro. Oh, this is a this is nitrum green, matter of fact. Oh, so you're using nitrum here? Yeah, on oh. on uh, on newsprint. Oh, or am I? Oh, okay. Let me, let me oh, double check. Sorry. Let yeah. me double check. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Oh, wild. All right, cool. So um, I would just go in and simply put, I would, I would go sharpen it like to nitrum can get like hypodermic needle sharp. Yeah. That's what I would do. And I would just really dig in that way. Just so, one, one, one little stroke. Don't touch, don't smear it. Don't do anything. Just a stroke. And that's it. Yeah. And you want to pull it over the form of the forehead like you want to feel it go over there are, are two moments there's an undulation right here where here's a lobe here's a temporal lobe right, right. and there's there's a, a valley in between so right. he digs in right he digs in but then it's gone right here and then he returns you see what i'm saying light light and dark light, light and dark light and dark yep over yep um so Okay, so also take a look at the ear. Um, I think the ear, as I run a line across, the ear is above the uh, nasal cavity. Right. And your ear is kind of below it. Okay. And so I would bump that ear up just a little bit. And as you bump that ear up, um, again, it, it, the, the, ear is, the ear surprises me for this reason. It, it always surprises me because it, 
implies the tilt of the head. So who cares about an ear? We, we, when we draw and paint portraits, we're always thinking the eyes, the eyes, the eyes. But actually the tilt of the head indicates whether the viewer is angled towards you, reclining away from you. You know, the tilt of the head is a woman at a bar either hitting on you or ignoring you. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, sure. um, so the tilt of his head is he's coming a little bit towards us. And so even check out that other ear uh, right here. Yep, I see it. Need more of an angle. Yeah. And then I will bounce back here. And I'm intentionally not d making these changes so perfectly uh, because you'll be able to do that. Yeah. Um, then the last thing I would say, I'm jumping over to airbrush. Take a real uh, close look at the nose. I think the nose just needs to almost be cleaned up a little bit. Um, it feels a little bit um, like his nose, I, that's a wacky sergeant nose. Um, but if you look over at your drawing, I think it just got a little bit smudged around it. Yeah, I think that, sure. And when you get when you get those um, when you get those hatch lines in there, uh, again, this drawing is good. The, the foundation is good. When you get those hatch lines in, um, you're going to be able to find the wing of the nose more easily. And and I apologize that I can't do it um, <laughs> with with this uh, device here. But when you see what I'm saying, how yeah, no, exactly what you sure. So, um, yeah. Uh, well, are there some, there are some ha hatch lines on the bridge of the nose as well? I, I'm not sure I see it or not. On where? On his nose. Is it on the, I guess, my right side? Are there some hatch marks coming down the bridge of his nose? On, on, if you so just do a close up of the, of the original portrait. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure there are. Look at, there's, there's these little yep. hatch. Yep. God darn. Yeah, he's amazing. He's just, I mean, <laughs> wow. It's really, I mean, it's so, it's so like the way that he turns the form um, is really uh, subtle and he's yep. keenly aware of the plane shifts. So that's, that's what I would do. I'd go in, maybe it's going to require a little bit of, um, you know, kind of like with the eraser going back in and sure. like over here, you could soften up. Um, maybe even going with your pinky and just softening up this passage right, right here. Right. Yep. And so watch me do that. Oh, sure. Just kind of softening things up a little bit and opening it up so that you can really just focus on the gentle plane changes within the face. So uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we, uh, I think it's important to actually leave you with that. Okay. And um, again, don't be a slave to a grid. Um, I would, I, I just turned it on so that you would see the drop downs. but um, you really wanna think also in terms of the volume of this head, the tilt of the head. He's, he's built spheres, he's built cubes, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, so, okay, cool. Let's jump over to our last guy. Um, okay, so um, again, I I opened up this drawing first, and then uh, the reference file second, and it was it was just so funny to me. Actually, I want to undo that. Uh, cool. We have two layers. Um, so the one first, the other second. But I already knew which drawing you did before I opened it up which is cool. I mean, that's like, that's where you want to be. Oh, that's cool, you recognize it as a sergeant, cool. I, I and I, not only just a sergeant, but I recognized who. Um, so I saw this drawing at the, uh, where was it? I think it was a Pierpoint Morgan. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it was a Pierpoint Morgan. Megan Ewell and I, we went together um, in January to the Pierpoint Morgan and I saw oh, this yeah, drawing. But, right, right. It was so cool. Um, it was a wonderful day. So let me just, I want to race away. On YouTube, our friend Cesar Santos mm -hmm. goes, to the, goes to the sergeant with his buddy, was it Procopenco? Yeah, Procopenco, 
someone yeah, like that. Yeah, he's a here is he's a funny guy. The pair yes. of them they get permission to go in front of a sergeant and sketch. Yeah. You take a look. Yeah, it's cool YouTube. It's a very cool YouTube. He's That's have you awesome. met him? Have you met Cesar, Cesar Santos? Nope. I've never met him before. Um <laughs> I am a big fan of his work. He's, he's yeah. super, super talented. Yep. Um and I mean he's also got a great business sense. He's 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 the full package. He's a yeah impressive dude. So, you know uh, that you know that's a, a Caesar Santos on the on the Nitram hacks. That's his work, the picture. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because he advertised one day one of his YouTubes is he brings out the Nitrams and starts mm -hmm. talking about them because they send him hundreds of them. And he says, Oh, by the way, that's I did that picture on the back of the on the back of the pack. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yep. That's really cool. He is, he's, he's not just good. He's like alive, like where he yes. tells stories with his pieces and he's like, he's witty and he's, he's, yep. he says, but he doesn't really have a message overtly. Like he's a cool dude. He, yeah. he went to uh, Angel Studio in Florence. I know. You did. I saw that. They were like the, uh, we were like the, the jets and the rockets in Florence. <laughs> Yeah, if we saw each other in an alleyway, we'd stab each other with the paintbrush and everything. <laughs> but uh, now, now back well, here. I wouldn't mess. By the way, he's a boxer. I wouldn't mess with him. No, and he's also he cool maybe I'll kick his legs out, but he, he's he's got probably a good right hook. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a fantastic beard. So yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with anyone who has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a character. That going. <laughs> um. All right. Cool. So, um, just a, a quick thing. The the length of the face uh let me merge these two together yes i see it now <laughs> yeah so the length of the face feels good but to the width of the face yeah, that's the um, problem yeah, yeah so the other drawing you really nailed it like you your proportions were looking really good um i i think this drawing uh the difficulty you're having is it feels like a little squeezed yeah and it brings so i'm bringing the obviously just the whole entire outside of the head jawline, just out like that. And you can see how now the bridge of the yep. nose, it's not that it changes that much, but it changes enough. But now you can see the, the nose itself. Um, the nose itself uh, n now wants to come wider. And just trying to find this. See that? And the nose comes a little a little yeah. bit wider. Um, I think the eyes might come out a little bit. So I think in this one, a two-dimensional uh, grid would assist you. Again, I'm not saying go get a grid and literally lay it down on top of the thing. I'm not saying that. But... Um, when you run lines across, so let's run a line across right here. Whoops. You see how, how yeah, different. Sure. So maybe, maybe um, hold on one second. Let me select it and move it, um, and not do. I I line them up based on hairline, but let me rethink that, and just want to move this up a little bit. There we are. Um, but if I line it up based on the eyes right here, yeah. um, then the nose is still too long. Too long. And then the lips are too uh, want to come up. Yeah. yeah. So like I, I tried my best to get it one to one. Um, but really it's it's not so much again, it's it's not as if everything needs to go into a grid. And then we have to line. That's that's not the the thought, because you don't have a grid when you look at a tree in front of you. I mean, you can set right. one up, but like I'm just saying, we don't have that in life. It's more so what I'm talking about is actually comparative, the height of something in relation to the width of something. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So a visual grid, a Mancini grid, is that, but then comparative anatomy is this to this the and then as as you get an understanding of that and you understand how wide the eyes are then you understand the length of the nose 
And so it's cool. I mean, you actually start, and, and this is, you, you are doing a tremendous job of every week, like taking a very, um, I, I don't even know how to put it into words, taking a lesson that is a lot to chew on and implementing it by the next time I see you seven days later. I mean, you're doing that like incredibly well. And that's what I would say for this one, where really trying to teach your eye how to see form in comparative terms where you're measuring, you can even literally grab a pencil and just measure the height of the head to the, um, to the width of the head. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I, you know, I do. I do that. You know, I have those calipers and I certainly do that. Still yep. doesn't help. Yeah, it helps sometimes. Yeah, hey. and I, I almost think like um, with this one that what happened was you, you, you masked in, and you, you got shapes and you and you got everything, and then that hair. This is a hair piece. Yeah. Um, and the the hair. Whoops. So I just scribbled too wide here. Sorry about that. It's almost like the hair overpowered the piece accidentally. Um, and that is so, so easy to do. Um, so I'm doubling back to the jawline, just trying to get that jawline in there. And you see how the eyes are working? I do now. And so this is an athlete. This is a powerhouse athlete. And he is in his full glory he's just beautiful and he's young and he's powerful <laughs> um and so we have that that full frontal neck that's very like you know almost like like there's a stoicism about it um and now the piece feels like it but one one of the things you'll notice is your eyes never changed you got those eyes and that's a really hard thing but the broader context of the face um, in relation to the eyes, just, it was a little bit tricky, you know? Right. Um, so that's pretty much my thoughts. I have um, one other thing I want to, I want to show you. Um, just give me, just give me one moment. Um, this is going to be really fun. So I was in London and I was getting potato chips and the, the, the British are so obsessed with Sargent. And by, getting, by the way, Kevin, I hate to correct you, but they're not potato chips, they're crisp. Yeah, <laughs> there you are, there you have it. <laughs> Bag of crisps. <laughs> so, they're, so a pack of crisps. Right. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so I saw this, I saw this uh, pack of crisps in a cafe, <laughs> and I was like, "I'm sorry, this is influenced by Sargent." So I put it up here. Uh, <laughs> you can see this. This is my Instagram account, and I said, "Even the potato chips crisps over here in the UK are influenced by John there C. Sargent." Good crisps. And right. and it's funny because I was hanging out with just loads and loads of uh, my English friends all the artists and they were like you're totally right <laughs> that, that is a john singer sergeant pack of crisps and i i'm disappointed that i forgot to buy uh or bring it back i bought it i left it over in england but i was gonna eat the crisps and then hang it up in my painting studio next to this there you go, there you go. Um, <laughs> it's just funny that's all it is it's just funny so it is terrible um so you are really, really on the right path. Um, the what you're drawing, how you're drawing, um, how you're challenging yourself to think in new ways. Um, about you know, we went with that Mancini grid today. Right. We talked a little bit more about comparative. It's almost as if you're like a let's go to boxing. You're a boxer, and you're always training your your muscles so that they there's a balance so that you don't want an overdeveloped set of biceps and an undeveloped set of triceps. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. So you are really paying attention to the full organism. 
um, you're on the right path here. Your drawing selections have been awesome, like perfect. And it's great how you're going from old master copies, even though John Singer Servant's not old master, but no. master copy. Um, and then you're hopping over to working from, you know, the figure model. So you're doing just a, an excellent right. job of that. Um, I just really have to commend you that, you. that your progress is, is awesome. Yeah, well, so. you know, is what this pandemic has done. It's concentrated time. It's given me time. I mean, when yeah. do I sit with you for 45 minutes, a half an hour, an hour? In the studio, you know, you by not your choice, but you'd have other students. You couldn't sit there and wax totally. po for a half an hour. You didn't have the time. Totally, yep. This this works. By the, by the way, how's, how's your studio, how's our figure modeling coming? Any movement on that at all? Oh, with um, actually having a figure model. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me all hop in. Um, yeah. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't even write the message to Tasha yet. Okay. Um, so I'm working on um, a massive project right now. And I'm, I'm coordinating with a few other people. And um, I every single time we're hitting the go button on it, because we finished, we find a whole other leg that needs to be addressed. <laughs> Um, but I think we're hitting go on it in just a few days. Oh, great. And then that will free me up. And I, not, not only will I want to work from the figure model with you and do that live session, I'll actually have to because it's related to the project that I want to do. So it's like your request was perfectly in line with what I'm Good. actually okay. doing in the future. So. I got to believe that other, lots of other people like me who would who, who jump right in and enjoy that. Totally, totally. And yep. it's gonna be cool because um, I, the one thing I, I, I will say is I did a dry run. So I had uh, my son Evan sit and he just simply sat with, um, uh, he, as if he's like holding something. It's actually the thing that he's holding is a, a chicken, uh, a baby chick. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that um, picture. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Talk about so, tender. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's something like, um, it's almost a Renaissance like, like b before Michelangelo took the Renaissance and the severe, you know, like we were talking about before, like almost that, like the, they called him la terribilita, like the, the Michelangelo, the terrible, like the awe inspiring. But before that, um, there's this beautiful, like the Florentine Renaissance art had such like a, a tender, uh, I think the artist's name is Mino da Fiesole, and these marble. Um, bus of children that are just in the history of art the most beautiful like I, I can't I can't even describe it I just gush with superlatives and when I looked at Evan I was like he has that like he has that sweet tender look as he's looking down it's like the very very early renaissance you know what I mean sure and uh I'll pull up you know Duff if you so like it's kind of fun yeah. um And this was lost when Michelangelo, you know, the writhing figures, like, um, I'm not finding a children's child's bust. That I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Um, there's one in particular that I was thinking of, and I'm he's not- a, He's a sculptor primarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I was thinking of uh, Desiderio um, because that's really more so what I was thinking of. But like this, this round cheeks, the almost geometric essence just being a sphere. Yeah, but look um, at the neck. I, look at the neck. You see, immediately you see where it, that angle. Yep, it's that angle. Yep. And th this is where it's so great for us to constantly be looking at like different mediums like the, the Renaissance painters were looking at the sculptors. You know what I mean? Donatello led the charge. The sculptors always lead the way. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting how the Renaissance is a real return to sculptural drawing. Uh, whereas before that, it was, I mean, the two-dimensional sophistication of international Gothic painting is astoundingly, it's beautiful. Medieval manuscripts, two-dimensionally, absolutely right. beautiful. Oh, yeah. Design. But sculptural, not at all. Um, it, that wasn't their emphasis. They weren't going for it. But uh, 
Yes, I'm looking at every one of those. Look at the necks on each of those sculptures. It's amazing. Yeah. Just, just that tilt. Here's another example. Yep. Subtle so, tilt makes it stiff. And then uh, Rubens later on would um would pick this up, and Rubens uh, head of a child. In this drawing, but it's, again, it's those like look at the round cheeks. Like you just want to bite. <laughs> like a baby she just there's just so wonderful round yeah, so yeah. so fun and that's how evan is like sitting in front of me where he's obviously not a little guy like this but um the roundness and the pure forms you just you only see that in youth it never yeah, yeah. never comes back again <laughs> nope <laughs> so well uh let me jump this over so you've been picking out um really awesome really awesome pieces and um i would i would just say like i almost don't want to select hey do this drawing hey do that drawing i, I almost don't want to do that because i like your choices okay because you're steering yourself in your interest towards your interests right and your enthusiasm is just really high i mean i can tell when um especially with the younger guys at the atelier um by younger i mean like very young but when i would give an assignment I can tell when someone just trudged through it because they had to. They wanted to put it right. You can you can see it, and then yeah. when somebody had a live wire beneath them, and that's what your drawings are. So like, Great. literally, keep it up. Um, keep I'll, I'll share my bonsai. I'll share my bonsai tree because I did one with Bill. Um, after you had left, we I, I brought you know uh, Linda, our friend Linda, the uh, portrait, the dog portrait artist. Yeah. Uh, I, she said to me, you should just bring something you, that you love. I said, yeah. how can I, I mean, I can't bring my wife in. <laughs> she won't model. And uh, I thought about it. I said, wait a minute, I love my bonsai tree. And I schlepped that tree into the studio. The, everyone nice. went crazy. Yeah, you'll see. They went crazy. And then Bill helped me with That's on Roma. That's just straight up uh, charcoal. And, and then I, I, I eventually went to pastel with it as well. Yeah. But that was my first attempt at doing trees. We haven't even started to talk about trees yet. And branches and whatever, which is another interesting thing. And my yeah. bonsai tree, I think you'll see immediately, it lends itself to portraiture. Because what I've done, what you do with bonsai trees, you get this heavy wire. It's aluminum core coated with copper. So it, it's light but bendable and strong. So you take those limbs and you bend them into shapes as to what you change everything. Yeah. And that's the whole trick. I mean, I've got oodles of books on this as well. And these, uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing what you can do with these trees. So cool. And I, yeah, it is cool. It's cool interest. That's another one of yeah. my interests. Yeah, I'll get I love that over. It. Yeah, thanks. You're, yeah. you're, you're going to get me into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, yeah, you had a, you got a garden as well. Where do you see your studio going? Where do you see you're going to, where you, you have a spot, you have space yet? Uh, absolutely nothing. Nope. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm going to say something that sounds, uh, I don't mean to sound, uh, uh, opportunistic at other people's expense, but man, they're saying commercial real estate, there's gonna be a lot of empty buildings. Oh, oh my God. And it's oh. like heartbreaking. Um, yeah. Here, here in Islip, you're seeing the first businesses start to shutter. And it's like, um, for, it's interesting. I spoke with a fellow, his big computer company, and we were talking about his company. So he has 250 employees. And he's like, you know, Kevin, he's like, I like, I don't view this as being such a shock and necessarily such a bad thing. And he's like, don't get me wrong. He's like, it breaks my heart. Like he's a very sensitive person. Yeah, I understand. But he's like wildfires sweep through economies once every 40 years. He's like, it's either great depression or war yeah. or, or deep recession. And he's like, it's a chance for the young brush to assert itself. And what, he's a, like, what a cool analogy. Yeah. Yeah, and he was like, black, you know, the black pines out in the on the um, on eastern Long Island, they will not grow unless they it has a fire. Unless you they know? have a fire, yeah, they, the, they will not yep. grow. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And it's like, and that's what he said to me. So he has two hundred and fifty employees, but he's oh still God. considered small. And there are these titans who have been shouldering him out forever, and he's. Ironically, he's he's doing fantastic in business right now. Yeah, it's all but from said, home. He was hitting the ceiling everywhere because the big guys 
um, had monopolized, the, the cornered the market, monopolized is wrong. And then he was just saying to me, um, he's like, he's like, Kevin, he's like, view this moment for you. He's like, you're 30 something, um, jump in, arm swing. He's like, go, it's go time. Like, and it was really beautiful. And I was, I was really touched because he was with me through a lot of, you know, what I've, I've gone through. And I was just like, cool. Wow. What a, what a, what a confidence booster. Yeah. I, I really great. appreciated it. That's yeah. good. Great. I can't, this, I just can't wait to work in your studio. I mean, this is great. I love the zoom, but you know, yeah, this, I just, I just, you know, to be in a, a studio with an artist is a totally different animal. Totally the, difference different. Is, the difference is live music versus listening to a recording. Recordings Absolutely. are good, but when the yep. musician's standing there playing, it's a whole, whole different yep. animal. It's a whole right. different animal. There's, there's yeah. a reason why Carnegie Hall packs out every night. <laughs> That's right. Because you're right. And, and they it's, play the same thing over again, over and over again. I mean, I, I'm yep. a, I, I love opera, and I can just listen to La Boheme over and over and over again, even though I know exactly what's going to happen. Mimi always dies. I mean, it's <laughs> terrible. That's pretty, that's that's pretty terrible. funny. Yeah, you know, you know, we talked about the beginning of La Boheme with the artists are starving. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys painting Moses uh, crossing the Red Sea. Anyways, they're so cold, they burn the painting to stay warm. Oh, there's, a, there's a comment on art there. And the yeah. guy who's writing this, this novel burns his novel to stay warm. Yeah. Stay, oh. And it's quite, a, quite an interesting story uh, yeah. about Artists in the 1880s, I mean, starving. They, they say starving. that Albrecht Dürer, uh, the great German artist, that he sure. burned, he burned some of his drawings. Uh, I don't know if that's apocryphal or not, uh, but yeah. It's interesting. Well, I yeah. know Michelangelo did because he didn't want anyone to see him. Yeah, he was. He had different motives. Yeah, some of a bitch. Yeah, he had PR going before PR existed. Like, yeah, he had the, was sorry. The, he had a yeah. biography written on him, and then while he was alive. And then he had it rewritten because he didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about like establishing your legacy, like the yeah. guy, the guy knew it before anyone knew it. So yeah, but he never, but he never got buried in the church. They had him on the steps of San Croce. You know, yeah. he never, they never allowed him, his body to be buried in that church. Uh, no, I, I just said yeah, as if I knew what you were talking about. I'm, no, no. So I'm there's listening. a church, the church of San Croce. Uh, we yeah. stayed. When we were in Florence. Um, I don't know, we read this, that the steps, that's where Angel, Michelangelo's body is. But Never knew it. Not allowed to be buried in the church. I, uh, I lived in Santa Croce. I lived in that quarter. Okay. And I would go to that church and everything. So I was stepping over poor Michelangelo. Yeah, oh, yeah, poor, even poor, it. his bones, yeah, his poor bones. <laughs> we, were in a ho we were in a hotel overlooking St. Croce. Florence is a cool, that's a cool town. That is really it's neat. A, yeah. It's a town that's of time forgot. Yep. Yeah, best gelato in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it was really nice. Did you ever but, get uh, yeah. to, was Arch there's a little uh, museum of Archimedes. Uh, what, the Galileo Museum? The Ga I'm sorry, the Galileo Museum. It's never advertised. It's a little tiny sound sign. Yep. Did you see his finger? They took his finger and put it in a bell jar. So I lived on Via Denari, which, which actually abuts uh, the Uffizi. And the okay. Galileo Museum is right there. I could see the Galileo Museum when I walked out my door. Oh man! For sure. <laughs> he was right there, and I never went. I was I never. Oh went. my I goodness! Just, I, I went to the Uffizi, you know, a thousand times, and I never went to the Galileo Museum. Yeah. I'm all his Galileo's, all his inventions are in there. Models of his yeah. inventions, whatever. Yeah. He was another. He was another heretic. Yeah, another. Yeah, <laughs> another. I love him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin, I'll see you next week. It's great. Sounds good, Mark. So I'll uh, I'll send over the still images, and right. then the YouTube video takes a few hours because uh, I post it, but then they process. Gotcha. And the processing sometimes it's gotten done in like uh, forty minutes. Another time it took like hours. So I don't know what goes on with YouTube. No, I had it the following day. But whatever, I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Good talking, Mark. Yeah, back to work. <laughs> yep. Bye bye. Talk to you then. Bye. I hope so.